Wizards of the Coast has made a downright bizarre decision regarding the upcoming Dungeons and Dragons Forgotten Realm Magic expansion. Magic. I am a wizard! History. I'm an old wizard! The Magic Historian. My bones hurt. Greetings! Owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles, my friends! I hope the day finds you well. We are here to talk about two things that I am a huge fan of. Magic the Gathering and Dungeons and Dragons. We're going to be talking about the new upcoming Magic the Gathering expansion that is set to release in July. So that's the next standard set that we're going to be getting after Strixhaven. So we're going to be taking a look at the concept behind it and the very bizarre decision that Wizards of the Coast has made in regards to this set. Because for me, the choice they've made really doesn't make much sense, all right? The Dungeons & Dragons set is something we haven't seen before in Magic the Gathering, and it really does mark the departure that we're making. Things are changing, we're moving into the realm of universes beyond, and that also ties in to the discussion that we're going to have here. Now, I have a mock-up card on the screen. This is not a actual spoiler card for Magic the Gathering. This card doesn't exist in this form. It was created specifically as a showpiece, essentially, so you can get the idea of what I'm talking about here, because visually, some people may not understand the concept of universes beyond or why this is so weird to me. So we're gonna be using this bag of holding as an example of what I wanna talk about. And if you haven't already seen it, bag of holding is the perfect card to talk about the intersection of Magic the Gathering and Dungeons and Dragons. Because up until now, we've never really gotten a proper taste of D&D when it comes to magic. There are a number of Dungeons and Dragons creature types and things that we've never seen in magic. We've never had the opportunity to have beholders. We've only had those little garbagey knockoff evil eye things that were like maybe pseudo beholders. You know, we didn't get mind flayers, gelatinous cubes. There are a lot of iconic Dungeons and Dragons monsters that Wizards of the Coast has intentionally kept out of Magic the Gathering, right? Because Wizards of the Coast owns both properties. It owns Dungeons and Dragons and it owns Magic the Gathering. So you figure there's a perfect dovetail between the two, considering they are both fantasy properties, right? With a lot of heavy overlap. But Wizards made the conscious decision to keep the brand separate by keeping particular iconic things specifically for Dungeons and Dragons. Now clearly they've had a change of heart and they've gone ahead and said, you know what, let's mix them up real good. Let's give a full blast of Dungeons and Dragons flavor. So up until now, Bag of Holding is the best that we've got. And actually from like a execution standpoint, I really like Bag of Holding. It's one mana casting cost artifact. Whenever you discard a card, you exile that card from your graveyard. You pay two mana, tap it, draw a card, then discard a card. Pay four mana and tap it, sacrifice Bag of Holding, return all cards exiled with Bag of Holding to their owner's hand. Now, admittedly, this doesn't exactly capture the flavor of a Bag of Holding, but just a, if you wanted to have a Bag of Holding that just, oh, okay, it holds things, what is that really going to do for you in Magic the Gathering? So this is a concept where you can shove as many things as you want into it. Every time you discard a card, it's really just actually going into your Bag of Holding. And if they didn't make the Bag of Holding sacrifice, sacrifice itself, this would be too powerful of a card. So there is that aspect where you go, okay, the card doesn't 100% fit the flavor of a bag of holding, but it does a really good job. The idea of draw a card, discard a card is rummaging through your bag of holding, looking for the specific item that you need. A bag of holding is an interdimensional space where you can essentially store not really a limitless amount of things because there is a limit to it, but it can hold far more than its normal content. So Bag of Holding has always been one of my absolute favorite mainstay items in Dungeons & Dragons, right? It's just so useful. You can keep so much gear in there. It doesn't encumber you the same way because when you're playing D&D, at least with like the old school 
versions like second edition and stuff, the amount of weight you have, your encumbrance, actually matters. So for me, getting to see this, the artwork shows the bag of holding with a ton of stuff just crammed into it. You can see like a dinosaur head coming out of it, multiple tentacles, there's a crossbow, there's a bow and arrow, there's a sword, like there's so much stuff, even a staff in the back. So it's just this treasure trove of magic, which is a really, really cool concept. And going forwards, obviously, we're gonna see a ton of cards like this when it comes to the Dungeons and Dragons Forgotten Realm set. Now, the weird thing about this is, from a flavor and lore standpoint, how do you mesh a Dungeons and Dragons world into Magic the Gathering? Because there are con some considerable issues that you'd have with this, right? I think one of the biggest and most glaring issues with the Dungeons & Dragons set would be Planeswalkers, right? I mean, they've they've gotten around some of the problems of this set by making this Dungeons & Dragons set essentially a core set. So you know how in recent times we've had Core Set 2020, Core Set 2021. We won't be getting a Core Set 2022. They release, they do it like uh, vehicles where the core set is named for the next year. So if we had a core set released in 2021, it would be called core set 2022. But in this case, they're actually releasing the Dungeons and Dragons set as a core set. Now the advantage this gives them is that core sets don't have to have a particular story that runs through the set. In fact, they normally don't, right? If you have a world like Ravnica, you have a set like Innistrad, Throne of Eldraine, whatever it is, you need to have a story that goes along with the set. But a core set is just a medley of whatever you want to put into it. So the Dungeons and Dragons set, by being a core set, allows them to sidestep the, the whole, we need an actual Dungeons and Dragons storyline that's running through this. And instead, they can do what is the equivalent of a buffet, where they can just pick like subjects that they think are going to be really interesting for people. You know what? Let's do flavor text from this famous character. Let's do a card based on this famous character. Let's make these famous artifacts. Let's bring these enemies in. Like Dungeons and Dragons is really deep in terms of what it brings to the table. So there's a lot that they can do. But like I said, one of the biggest sticking points is Planeswalkers. And I don't know exactly how they're going to execute this in terms of you have things like the Planeswalker situation can really go one of two ways that I can think of. Either you pick characters from Dungeons and Dragons and essentially make them into Planeswalkers regardless of whether they can traverse planes. But I mean, really powerful mages can go to other planes of existence. In Dungeons and Dragons, you have the four elemental planes, earth, wind, fire, water, all that kind of stuff, right? So there are already ways to traverse across planes. So it's not that big a leap to create planeswalkers, they're using their magic instead of inborn sparks. So that's one way to handle it. Another way to handle it, which I'm wondering if they're gonna do, is to bring pre-existing planeswalkers we already know into the set. Because Wizards of the Coast doesn't really do sets where they don't bring in at least some planeswalkers we already know. Usually it's predominantly planeswalkers we already know with maybe a new one thrown in there. So Throne of Eldraine brought back Garruk, the Kenrith twins, and mixed in Oko. And Ixalan was where we saw Angrath for the first time, right? So usually it's Planeswalkers we already know and maybe a new character to help you explore the world from a different perspective. Although they might not even be from that plane. But regardless, most of the time we get Planeswalkers we already know. So if the Dungeons and Dragons set ends up with Planeswalkers we already know, how do we explain that these Planeswalkers somehow ended up in Faerun, right? Faerun is the, the, the land of Forgotten Realms or one of the lands in the Forgotten Realms, right? So it's Forgotten Realms, not just one. But, you know, how do you explain somebody like Chandra being in Faerun? How did, how did she get there? Are the actual Magic the Gathering Worlds and Dungeons and Dragons world linked? And the answer is no, they're not actually linked. And Wizards of the Coast has come out and said that the Dungeons and Dragons set won't be canonical. And if you don't know what that means, it basically means that the Dungeons and Dragons set isn't going to fit into the overall story of the Magic the Gathering world. So there, if, 
if Chandra or Jace or somebody like that does end up in this Dungeons and Dragons set, it will have no impact on the story and anything that happens there, they don't really have access to in the main magic storyline. It's a very weird situation. And what makes it weirder for me is the choice that Wizards has made to not include the Dungeons and Dragons set in Universes Beyond, right? Because Universes Beyond is something they just recently announced. Now, it's going to be fully launched next year. And Universes Beyond is where we literally step into Universes Beyond Magic the Gathering. This is how they're going to accomplish bringing Space Marines from Warhammer 40k into Magic the Gathering. And also the Lord of the Ring stuff into Magic the Gathering without having it in like overlap with the storylines or cause any kind of problems with canon it's literally not considered part of the actual magic multiverse these are universes beyond the magic multiverse and that neatly separates them out and we saw that they actually decided that the what are they called the secret layer that was based around walking dead that is universes beyond and that is denoted by the little triangular shaped Ex uh, not expansion symbol, the the foil that they use for authenticity stamping of magic rares. So if you take a look at the bag of holding I have on the screen, you'll notice that the, the, the symbol down at the bottom has changed from the oval into this triangle from Universes Beyond. Now remember what I said earlier in the video, this is a mock-up that I had created for this video, right? I didn't make it myself. Carly made it because she knows how to do this stuff better. She did a good job. In all honesty, if I told you that this was genuinely a spoiler from the upcoming D&D set, it would be 100% believable. The expansion symbol looks right. You've got the stamp down at the bottom and bag of holding 100% fits in the D&D world. This is genuinely a card I absolutely expect to see in the D&D set in July. If they don't put this in, I would be very confused. But... Wizards of the Coast has said that all cards going forwards with from Universes Beyond will have this triangular hollow stamp on it, right? And that's why the previous Walking Dead secret cards are considered to not be part of the Magic the Gathering multiverse. They are essentially the first universe beyond scenario. But Wizards of the Coast has come out and said that they won't make the D&D set into a Universes Beyond set because they own the property, which is a very, it's, it's a baffling statement to make where you literally have concepted something that allows you to step outside of your own canon and do whatever you want. And you're making a set that you specifically say is stepping outside of your own canon, right? This doesn't count as canon. So this would be the perfect opportunity to consider it universes beyond. Now the universes beyond sets are supposed to have a unique card frame to denote that they're from Universes Beyond, but that also isn't necessary for something to be considered Universes Beyond because they've already gone ahead and said that the Walking Dead secret layer cards are Universes Beyond. So if you've decided that you can just go, okay, stuff like this is Universes Beyond, then why can't the Dungeons and Dragons stuff be considered Universes Beyond? You've literally created a particular subset of magic cards that are designed to be anti-canonical and you're just not including the D&D set in there because you own that property that's where it becomes bizarre to me I can't find a logical reason to do that unless it's just simply that they didn't think of creating the universes beyond concept in time for printing the Dungeons and Dragons set but they made the Walking Dead secret layer like so long ago that I can't like my brain can't find the overlap where this makes sense, right? Like how do you go from anything that's not canonical can just be universes beyond to Dungeons and Dragons is coming to magic. And no, it's not actually a part of magic. There's no actual overlap with the real world of magic, but the specific grouping of products we created to be outside the world of magic, it also doesn't fit into there. It just, I hate it when things don't make sense. Do you know what I mean? Like I sit there and go, what is going on? What world are we living in? It's like, I created a box for jump ropes. And it's like, that's clearly a jump rope. No, uh, it's not a jump rope because I only put jump ropes that are made off of other people's ideas in that box. But this jump rope was made off of my idea. So it doesn't go in the jump rope box. Like that's, that's the mentality that, that it seems like to me. I genuinely 
don't get it. It does. It just seems really bizarre to me. So I wanted to talk about it. Actually, I want to talk more about the Dungeons and Dragons set. I want to talk about some of the cool stuff that I'd like to see in it. So why don't you tell me what you think would be cool to see in the Dungeons and Dragons Forgotten Realm set in case you think of something cool I didn't think of. And then I can steal your idea and I can take credit for it without ever mentioning that you came up with it. That sounds amazing. I mean, I guess you could just go, hey, go look at my comment on this video right here and you'll see I said it, but you'll never know if I thought it or not. So put your ideas for me to steal down in the comment section below. List of my top patrons scrolling on by. Thanks for supporting my channel, my friends. I will leave a link to a very funny video that I've done on my other channel. I invite you to come by and check it out. Thanks for being here, my friends. See you next time.